Hi there, this is Love Johar. Thank you so much for tuning into this channel and thank you so much for watching this video. Again, we will discuss practical cyber security case studies in this video. Please watch carefully and as always, if you have any comments, please feel free to add in the comment section. And especially if you are liking this series, please add in the comment section so that I can keep on creating these videos. Thank you. So the first scenario that we have today is grandma's shopping scam. Okay, uh, let us see what we have here. So the scenario says your grandma receives a phone call from someone claiming to be from her bank. Okay, so seems like a social engineering attack uh, from the looks of it. Let's see how it unfolds. They tell her their suspicious activity on her account and request her personal information and credit card details to fix the problem. Okay, so since uh, they are targeting old people so cyber security impact in this case uh, because of social engineering if your grandma falls for the scam and provides her information personal information and credit card details the caller can easily steal the money using her identity for fraud purposes okay so how to prevent under the scenarios of social engineering when someone tries to uh, lure uh, somebody old or somebody who is uh, you know, uh, easy target. So always verify the caller's identity before giving out personal information. You should ask specific questions as to uh, the details of the caller from which branch the caller is calling, uh, the details of the specific bank, etc. Uh, the job profile, uh, etc. And never give out your personal details over the phone. Okay. Unless you have yourself initiated a call. Okay. So bank will never actually call, uh, you know, and ask for such details at any time and be cautious of any such urgent calls or messages requesting immediate access because uh, the the tricky part over here is to understand the urgency. If there is any immediate action that is required on your part, that means it is a scam. OK, so they use urgency in order to scam people. OK. So scammers often use pressure tactics to create a sense of urgency as I've already mentioned. If you are not sure, you can hang up and call your bank directly using a phone number you know which is legitimate, okay? You can search the bank number, okay? You must be having it and uh, you can call the number directly for the bank number and ask if there is any such scenario, okay? Uh, this is very common uh, because of social engineering attacks, so please be mindful, okay? Ah, nowadays the very common one lost phone panic okay so you lose your phone let's say while shopping you have gone to a shopping mall you have, you you lose your phone somehow okay and your phone had your contact information your photos your banking apps and social media accounts each and everything in it okay so let's say if your phone does not have a lock screen okay or a password then anyone who finds your phone can easily access all your personal information okay and easily access your photos your banking apps your social media accounts and can you know access your personal data okay and this can actually involve stealing your identity and they can contact your friends also and ask for money also in this scenario okay and they can also you know gain access to your bank accounts so how to prevent such a thing so uh, losing the phone or phone being stolen are very common scenarios so please be careful always set a strong password okay on your uh, phone and try to have dual authentication on the phone as well where you enter a pattern as well as along with the password uh, on the lock screen of your phone and add fingerprint as well or facial recognition for extra security so that nobody can simply access your phone and regularly back up your phone's data to the cloud or an external drive so that in case of any uh, phone loss, there should be no data loss in this scenario. Okay, so you have your important information, even the phone gets stolen or lost by any chance. Okay, now there is another feature which is find my device feature. You can use find my device feature on your phone and it can actually help you to locate it. 
the new iPhones also have this feature where even they are turned off, you can locate them. Uh, so Apple also provides such features and Google also has find my device feature, which you can use as far as uh, you are able to locate the device. Okay. So after that you have public Wi-Fi woes. So every now and then we see many public Wi-Fi hotspots, which are uh, networks, which are easily available nowadays on any coffee shops, you know where we sit, uh, you know, uh, and we access our email, social media accounts. And the one thing that we forget is that these public Wi-Fi networks are not secure. Okay. And the hackers might be sitting on a just uh, one chair apart from you and they can actually understand and intercept all the data which is traveling between your laptop, your phone and the uh, public Wi-Fi of that particular, uh, you know, uh, cafe zone or, you know, any place which a public place where you are having this uh, connectivity. Okay. So uh, what will be stolen in this case, your login credentials can be stolen, your personal information can be stolen. And they can also inject malware on your laptop or mobile. Okay. They can also spy on your activities, they can see seal your personal data as well, or damage your device as well. Okay. So what should be done in this scenario, whenever you see there's a free public Wi Fi, uh, please do not use it for any sort of sensitive uh, activities like online banking or accessing personal accounts. This is very important and mark this uh, do not use public Wi-Fi for any sort of sensitive activities. Okay, because you don't know, uh, you know, if anybody is tracking the activity, if anybody is tracking your data or not. Okay, if you must use public uh, Wi-Fi, consider using a VPN to encrypt your internal traffic. Okay. So if you use a VPN, then the traffic will be encrypted. At least it will take some more time for the interceptor to, uh, you know, decrypt that uh, traffic if possible. Only then the data can be visible. Okay. Be wary of clicking on links or downloading files from unknown sources, especially when connected to public Wi-Fi, because you don't know uh, what sort of links can open up in the public Wi-Fi and cause harm to your uh, computer. Then you have social media login breach, a popular social media platform uh, experiences a data breach where millions of user passwords are compromised. Hackers exploit a software vulnerability to gain access to the password database of the social media platform. Users whose passwords are leaked at risk of account takeover, identity theft and reputational damage as well because it is a social media platform. The social media platform also receives significant financial losses and decline in user trust as well after this incident. Okay. So this is for social media platform uh, in case of any data breach, uh, how to respond to that. So first of all, implementing strong encryption standards for storing the user passwords is something, uh, you know, which is very important and encouraging uh, users to create strong and unique passwords for each online account uh, is very important. Offering multi-factor authentication in this scenario will be always an additional uh, security step uh, for making sure that only authorized user are ad accessing the uh, social media platform and uh, no uh, hacker or you know unwanted uh, you know uh, people can access the social media account so after that we have ransomware attack okay ransomware attack on school district so a school district uh, district suffers a ransomware attack where hackers encrypt critical data, including student records and administrative files. Okay. So now as since this is a ransomware attack, the attackers demand a ransom payment to decrypt the data. Okay. So the uh, school district faces disruption uh, to its operations, you know, potential data loss and difficulty restoring essential files, uh, which can severely impact student learning and administrative functions as well. So how to recover from this incident and what are the lessons learned? Uh, number one would be, regularly backing up the essential data to a secure location offline so that in case of any ransomware attack uh, of this sort you can simply uh, delete and format all the existing uh, you know data which you have storage and actually backup from a secure location which is offline okay there could be offline tape storage mechanisms there could be offline tape libraries which you can maintain at a remote location there could be different things here which you can do okay 
and how to prevent ransomware attack at first place would be to train employees on identifying and avoiding any phishing attempts that can lead to malware infections first of all so that uh, you know uh, you do not fall prey to such attacks and implementing security measures like firewalls and antivirus software to protect system from unauthorized access at the first place okay now after that we have smart home attack uh, smart home act which is i think internet of, internet of devices uh, uh, which is uh, seems to be related to internet of uh, devices uh, let's see uh, internet of things let's see a homeowner with a smart home device like a connected thermostat or security camera falls victim to a hacking attempt hackers gain access to the device and potentially use it to spy on the homeowner adjust home settings or even unlock doors so internet of things uh, introduce very smart home devices uh, which are used very commonly nowadays and uh, as you can see the potential uh, cyber security incident which has happened in this case the homeowner faces privacy concerns potential security risks and disruption to their smart home environment as well okay so first of all internet of things whenever you have any smart home devices please uh, try to use some reputable and branded devices which have security features and one uh, most important thing is to update them with the latest software patches because uh, i have seen many times internet of things so what happens is these smart devices are not at all uh, equipped with the recent patches because of it it is very easy to exploit them okay and sometimes people also do not change the default passwords the administration passwords for these devices and keep on using the uh, device uh, you know generated password which came with the device itself and again it, it becomes very easiest for the hackers to gain access to the device and potentially use it to spy as well as uh, you know uh, disrupt any uh, home doors etc in this scenario okay so be cautious about uh, you know uh, what information you share through your smart home devices and limit access to authorized users as as well this is uh, very important in the, in this case okay uh, internet of things uh, smart devices are very easy to target nowadays because people who are using these devices are sometimes not all technical so that's where it is a uh, very easy prey for the attackers to attack the uh, internet of things devices okay so i hope this video has been helpful uh, without keeping it too long i will end it here and in the next video we will see a uh, cloud storage misconfiguration uh, attack supply chain attack phishing attack on non profit company insider threats internet of things vulnerability social engineering attack click jacking attack sim swap fraud uh, this is very common one you should be aware about this malware in mobile apps again a common one crypto jacking attack very important to know so uh, keep liking this video and keep uh, sharing this video with your friends if you like the content and add in the comment section if you have any doubts thank you so much for watching take care bye bye